And we're back. Welcome to Shark Coast Tactical Podcast, episode 20. My name is Will Mean. I am the owner of Shark Coast Tactical. I'm here with my homies. I have Omar. Hello. Luke Andrews. What up? And the amazing Dean Carroll. What's up? How are you guys doing? Pretty good. Good. If you guys are watching this, uh, please shoot our channel or smash the like button, whatever, the subscribe button, however you do it. Please subscribe to our channel. Um, give us a follow. Give us a like. Give us a share. Uh, we do this podcast in order to uh, strengthen our digital footprint. As a firearms company in Florida, we do get shadow banned like a motherfucker. And anything you can do to help us would be appreciated. Thank you guys for coming. I know y'all didn't want to. Like, you guys are all tired. I was already here. Well, everybody's all PTSD from the hurricane. Yeah, it's been a long yeah. week. It's been two a long weeks. week. Long. It's been a long two weeks, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> like, everybody's... I mean, I'm, I'm a little PTSD. Absolutely. I had a hard time. Yeah. Oh, my God, yeah. How did you do, Dean? Uh, Wait, it, so hold hard. on. Just, just, just in case you live in another part of the world and don't know, oh, yeah. we're in Sarasota, Florida... And Sarasota, Florida, we're really in Siesta Key. Siesta Key is four miles that way. And the hurricane landed four miles that way. Hurricane Milton. And and it really did some damage on our town. Um, and, okay, so that was back to Dean. That was a direct hit, right? It was like a direct hit, yeah. yeah. We got yeah. directly hit by that motherfucker. Man, I, I, I did all right. I had, like, a fence get destroyed. And I did get water in my house, in my living room. It came through. What? Yeah. How? Um, in between me and my neighbor's house, the land kind of goes down a little bit, and it just puddled water there, and then somehow set through, seeped through my uh, foundation, I guess. So you, you decided to stay. You didn't evacuate. No, I decided to stay. Why? I don't think I would evacuate unless it was like a direct hit for me, Category 5 or okay. High 4. Other than that, I, I don't want to leave all my shit. You do know it can change into a... And it absolutely At can. any time. <laughs> At any time. <laughs> so I'm saying no one follow what I do, but... Right. It just kind of... Well, what was your what was your flood uh, level? I'm not in one. Oh, okay. Yeah. Nice. So back to you, so you got water inside your... your in my living room, your, yeah. Your living room? Yeah. So I have, do you have carpet? Yes. I oh, really fuck. Have carpet. How did you dry out your carpet? Uh, dehumidifier and fans and tore it up. Make sure there's no mold and just threw the whole thing out. Oh my carpet, gosh. The whole living room and dining area. Holy shit. You threw out the whole carpet? Yeah. I, I didn't want to deal with it. I was already kind of angry. And the fence being blown. Oh, then my AC. Oh I man. I got a softball size hole in my AC. And I'm not <laughs> sure what the wind blew into it. It's destroyed. Well, at least the, the softball sized hole that your AC took during a hurricane, it could have been a softball sized hole in one of you. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's true. <laughs> your hurricane died saving your, your AC died saving you. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Completely. All in all, it, it wasn't that bad. It's just who did you uh, money who did you stay with in your house? Uh, me, my brother, and my girl, and my uh, my animals. And your okay. I, my whole family is. They're all up north. They're panicking. You need to leave. You need to leave. Really? Yeah. Were they? My dad at four o'clock in the morning. What day was that? Um. Tuesday, the day before, because it hit like Wednesday night. So Tuesday night at 4.06, my phone's going off, and it's my father telling me to evacuate now, and you need to get the hell out. Really? Yes. I looked at the phone. I was like, we're not going anywhere. Oh, it was just a text message? Yeah, it was a text message. I didn't was it a.m. or p.m.? A.m. Oh, my God, really? <laughs> yeah. He called, and I, I didn't answer it, because uh, by the time I woke up, it was like the last ring, and then he texted, and I read the text and went back to bed. So he woke up in the middle of the night, you know, worried for his boy and yeah. called you. That's touching. Yeah. He, he cares. Nobody lot. called me. No? <laughs> no. <laughs> Nobody called me saying you needed to evacuate. No, but everyone that loves you is right there in the house. Uh, I mean, yeah. yeah. I mean, I don't know. I mean, that's debatable. <laughs> <laughs> it's really debatable if they love me. But he was really worried, and then... Uh, Dogs love me. My girl's mom, she was really worried. She was trying to get us to evacuate, evacuate. Everyone's telling us we need to leave, we need to leave. Really? And I was like, by the time it gets to where I live, it, it should be like a three. Right. Maybe even a two. It hit as a, did it hit as a four or a high three? Uh, three. Was it a three? Yeah. A high three, almost four then. That thing was pretty powerful when it came, made landfall. Yeah. Did you guys hear the wind? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. 
It was great. But the time it made it to me, it was it was down to I, I guess like a strong two. I can't believe it did that much damage out of two. It's because that wind. Yeah. What the were the winds on where do you know? I'm not sure. They were saying like 175 miles per hour, but I'm pretty sure they died down by the time they got. I think they're the. I think the winds were documented as a buck 25. They're 125 miles per hour. Yeah, I had 120 mile an hour wind gusts at my house. Yeah, that's cooking. Yeah, cooking. That's tear your roof off wind. Yeah, Yeah, Frank. Um, Frank. Uh, Frank Patron. Um, big guy, big bald guy who is kind of Shark Coast. I don't know. He's like the mayor. (laughs) <laughs> you guys say he's, like, he's like the I mayor. Like, I like that. He lost his roof. Yeah, he showed me pictures. Yeah, his oh, roof came God. off. And then, and then Ian, my stepson, my son Ian, he uh, he lost his roof. Really? Mm-hmm. Oh, I didn't hear about that. Oh yeah. Yeah. Was he there? No, no he evacuated with his girlfriend oh, and his okay. cat. He took off like smart people. <laughs> what about you, Omar? What did you do? Oh, I had a, I had a great time. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us. Uh, you to... enjoyed your first major hurricane immensely, huh? It was my first major hurricane. I was here for the last few ones, but uh, when this was the nastiest one we've had, it didn't feel like it for me. No. I, okay. I got very lucky. I, I stayed. I stayed at my friend's house. He, we had generators with like twenty-five cans of fuel and Kevlar and over Kevlar sheets over every window, shutters. Kevlar I, sheets. Yeah. Every window had... They make Kevlar sheets? Yeah. Every window had a giant Kevlar sheet over it, and then hurricane shutters over that. And like I said, we had the generator going, so we lost power for a few hours, and then as soon as the storm passed, we kicked on the generators, and power got restored quickly after. I was playing video games while all my friends were talking about dying. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, We, Like I said, we were just having fun, and then uh, Ian came back. He, He ran up to Tallahassee, and when he came back, he found out that... A, his roof was gone, but then also uh, he had found out that his roof was gone and his bathroom ceiling had caved in. After he got back, the ceiling right above his bed also caved in on top of his bed. So if yeah. he was sleeping, he would have gotten hit in the face with a ceiling. Ooh. Um, so he came and he stayed with us as well. So it was just me and my buddy, Eddie, and just basically having a sleepover playing video games. Did you guys all play video games at the same time? Yeah. <laughs> and then... uh. Right, right when the eye was above us, it was really cool because you could hear the wind outside, and then suddenly it just stopped. What and did then, you do during the eye? Did you go outside and play around? Yeah. Me, uh, did me, you get your nods on? And... Yeah, we got our nods on. And we, <laughs> we walked around the neighborhood just with our nods on looking at everything because it's not very often you get to be at night and no lighting, like all the lights are off. Mm. Uh, so it was it was cool to be able to walk around like an urban setting with no artificial light. It wasn't uh, that dark, though. It wasn't like it wasn't pitch black in my neighborhood yeah it wasn't pitch black by any means but everybody was outside like walking around with flashlights and we were just walking around with our nods and every once in a while somebody would shine their flashlight at us and scream it was really funny really <laughs> yeah we would scare people because all the that's, uh, that's pretty smart yeah i'm assuming middle just, eastern looking dude scaring people <laughs> with night vision good night vision <laughs> we we're just walking down the street and nobody knows we're there and then they shine their flashlight and just see two guys standing probably two little uh, blue like glowing circles and just, <laughs> yeah, two, two fuzzy looking millennial <laughs> kids with one of them definitely Z. middle eastern we're zoomers oh you're zoomers yeah i don't know the difference i'm sorry <laughs> then what what did you so the eye happened then what did you do went back inside kept playing video games <laughs> so you, you you really kind of lucked out i had a vacation i Didn't, that uh, honestly it was it, yeah <laughs> Good for you. Good for yeah. you, Omar. Nice. Yeah. I, I don't want to like brag about it or anything because I know a lot of people suffered a lot worse, but I got extremely lucky. I'm very fortunate. What about you, Luke? What'd you do? I had like the opposite experience of Omar. <laughs> 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 um, well, at first, I um, I didn't know if I should stay in my apartment or go to my parents' house in Venice. They're gone up north, so um, you know it was an open house, and their house is made of like uh cinder blocks and my my apartments in a wood structure <laughs> and i i didn't know what to do and I, I called my brother and he was like do you remember the story of the three little pigs you should probably go to the <laughs> house with the cement brick so i went there and it wasn't that bad but we lost power and i didn't have any phone service for like three three days so i was like completely disconnected from the internet um why didn't you go to like mcdonald's I mean, I, I I would go out a little bit, but, like... The lines at the McDonald's were yeah. insane. <laughs> In oh, Venice, yeah, yeah. like, everything was closed. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, I just ran the generator and... Oh, you had a generator. I had a generator, 
but I pretty much just use it to power the fridge and like my phone and stuff. But yeah, I, phone and bam. Yeah, <laughs> it got pretty. It was nice and cool the first night, which was nice. But yeah, I kind of just hunkered down there, and then we got power at my apartment back, so I came back there and uh, yeah, came back to work on Tuesday. Omar, was your with the generator at the Taj Mahal you were staying at? Was it hooked into the um, the electric electric panel? Uh, no, it just had like uh, one... it was it was so big that like it could power everything without it. <laughs> no, no, it, it had a cable that came in that we used splitters on, so whatever we needed, we just plugged into the generator. Like there was wire running around the whole. Who house. figured out how to use the generator? Uh, my my friend, like his family's big prepper. They they took oh. this a time or two, so. Okay. They were all ready for it. I just showed up and I was like, "Hello." So, so your <laughs> your buddy, your buddy's family are preppers. Yeah. Big Weird. time. Weird. Wow. Yeah, they they have like I don't know, like 3 they months can't... worth of food uh and water for like, you know, 10 people or whatever and uh, like I said, generators with a whole lot of gas and but She used to work for the government, right? Still does. Great. Yeah. What but do they then, know? Yeah. <laughs> That's where all like the Kevlar sheets and everything. All that stuff was already prepared. They've been through this a time or two. That's why I went there. I've never seen Kevlar sheets. Yeah, that's what I was... I've never even heard of them. Yeah, it was just these giant, you know, single sheets of Kevlar that they would put over the windows and over the front door as well. So there was like a little, uh, you know, buffer zone between the front door and the outside. And, you know... If you, you know, you could step outside of the front door and stand with just the Kevlar in front of you during like the height of the hurricane so, and it just felt like nothing. I don't mean to beat a dead horse, but I watch a number of prepper videos and, and like, like in my algorithm is prepper stuff. Mm -hmm. And I've never heard of a Kevlar fucking sheet. I'm guessing it's a, you know, hurricane just to make sure because it's all like taut. So it, uh, I'm guessing if something were to come, the Kevlar would catch it. I mean, I know, I understand the process, yeah. man. But I'm just saying I've never fucking heard of it. I, I don't think it's a like a standard prepper thing. I think it's more of just a hurricane. And was it something custom they had made? Prob prob probably. Possibly. Uh, I mean, yeah. it, it was it was ridiculous amounts of overkill because all of the windows in their house are already hurricane glass, so it's yeah. like you know two inches thick or whatever. Yeah, I have that. Yeah. On top of that are Kevlar sheets on top of hurricane shutters. So it was you know, I, I felt safer than I ever have in my life. <laughs> were um so were you the most experienced person with a firearm? I would say so. Okay, so you were just basically the fire team. Yeah, I was there. You're like, you're having like fun, hey, relaxing. Could, and you, could you bring Omar over? <laughs> yeah, well, my the stuff I took with me was the funniest because I took one small backpack full of clothes and another small backpack full of like toiletries and a couple snacks and whatnot, and then I brought three rifle bags. <laughs> okay, and then all of my ammo. So I was all ready. of your ammo. All of my ammo. I was very ready. <laughs> Okay. Man, a lot of war. <laughs> Did it get scary for you? Uh, were you by yourself, Luke? I was. Oh, yeah. fuck. You are by yourself? Yeah. What? This is my second one by myself, too. The first one, Ian, I was by myself, too. Did you get wasted before I, it came? No. I, I stayed sober until, like, probably the right after the I. And it was probably, like, midnight. And I was like, <laughs> fuck this. And I had a couple drinks and went to bed. <laughs> it was, um... It got a from my vantage point, like where where I was staying, like you could hear it, and it was I was even I'm pretty non getting scared over hurricanes, and I was like, whoa, like that that's some fucking powerful wind, and you because you yeah. heard it, and like the wind kept hitting into the doors, and I think like like the one place I don't have hurricane rated glass is my bedroom, which needs to fucking change. Yeah, cause me and my wife are, are laying there and if they, if they smashed in like glass would just hit us and I was like, Whoa, I'm that's pretty dumb. Did you guys think of anything um, that you didn't prepare for? Did it come up where you're like, fuck, I don't have this. Yeah. I, I wish I would have downloaded more movies and stuff. With my laptop. <laughs> <laughs> that for sure. But, uh, I was short on gas. Oh yeah. But I was usually when I'm, but. I'm trying to shop for a house to try to be somewhat near a hospital to be on their same grid so my power comes back sooner. I thought I was. And then I usually always get my power back within, I don't know, two hours max. Yeah, us too. So I didn't get a lot of gas. And then next thing you know, I'm calling buddies, hey, can you get me gas? Like two days after the hurricane, I was running out of gas in my generator. Yeah, did you guys have trouble finding gas for like generators oh, or yeah. cars? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it was crazy. I, um, I... 
didn't i mean i give myself like a like a c grade as far as um yeah, yeah. prepping like i definitely i mean i was beating myself with a feather bat my wife was like oh no honey you did fine and i'm like god damn it we don't have this <laughs> but i had to go get gas like the next day like i didn't have enough i thought our power comes on a couple hours yeah every time because we're not that far from sarasota memorial and i always thought that we were kind of like on the same grid yeah and <laughs> And our power didn't come on fast, and I realized I'm like, shit, I don't have enough gas. And I drove to, um, I put a post on Facebook and said, who has gas? And and our friend Kevin mm -hmm. was like, was like, I have gas, and you better come over because I'll give it to people. <laughs> and so I went over there and, and, and hooked up, and then I ran out of that. Woo. I hit up my buddy Sean because um, his power came back on like an hour after the hurricane. He passed. lost power for a week last time. He always loses power for a long time. And this one, he's down with uh, Ponta Gorda. Ponta Gorda, yeah. And it just came right back on. So I figure... If that he has my generator. There, does he? Yeah, he's got one of my generators, I think. He returned that. Yeah, he brought it out in his buddy's truck. And where's... I have two, and I, I, I can only find one. Storage unit. There's one in the storage unit. There's a... Is that the one in the box? Yes. We took that one. You took that one. We took that one. We have two, but I, I don't know where the other one is. Probably gave it away to somebody. I probably gave it away. I thought I gave it away to Sean. Because you had Sean. You he did. Brought he brought it here, back. And then you told him, hey, take it to my house. And he drove it over to your house. Fuck. I thought it was at your house. Maybe one of my kids sold a generator for crack. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I hit up Sean because I figured it would be tons of gas uh, down south since they all, not all, but most had power. And uh, he found me 20 gallons. And then I met him here in Sarasota and picked up 20 gallons and took it back home. Nice. Life-saving. It was not, I mean, the amount of, like, did you guys get text messages all day from people saying, hey, do you need something? No. Uh, for the most part. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> I got text messages all day from people and all they said was, do you need something? And at first I was like, that's a little weird. And then I kind of realized it was like a thing. Like, like I must have gotten 300 texts from different people, people I didn't know. Yeah. We had gun shops, two gun shops called from out of state. Like one competitor called and was like, "Hey, um, do you, I I compete with you, and we do kind of the same thing, but I know you guys are out of power and it's rough down there. And should I see? But do you guys need anything? Do you want me to send you water? Do you want me to send you food? Do you want me to send you batteries? Anything? I can Amazon something to you." And I'm like, "I," and it freaked me out a bit. And then I was like, oh, no, that's all right. And then another gun shop called and did the same thing. But but all for every day, it was, it was hey, do you need anything? Do you need anything? Yeah, I got a lot of those. But you, you didn't get a lot of that no more? I didn't need anything. There's that Generation Z. <laughs> <laughs> Again. <laughs> Zoomers. You guys are all fucking cracked out on video games. I mean, most of the people that would have been texting me, I was, I was playing with. <laughs> playing yeah. Space Marines with. Space Marines? New game. Warhammer. Very cool. Warhammer. You ever heard of that? Yeah, it's a D&D &D thing. It's a tabletop game and a huge, huge story, but they just came out with a new video game, and it's very cool. Is it medieval? No. So there's Warhammer Fantasy, and there's Warhammer 40K. Uh, 40K is the the one that the game just came out for. It takes place in 40,000. Uh, this one is like 42-something, but it takes 40,000 years in the future, basically. Okay. Very, very cool premise. I don't think I have enough time to, to learn video games. This one's way past a video game. This is like a whole lore thing. It's the story is probably longer than my life. Oh, I could get into that. Yeah, there's so much to learn. So did it? So did it get scary for anybody? Like, what, any at any time were you worried? I feel like I was more worried before. Like, really, were you? Like, on like, I didn't give a fuck. <laughs> <laughs> so on Saturday, the Saturday, the the Saturday before, I watched a video about these people that were trapped in uh, Knoxville, Tennessee after Helene. And then it like, got me thinking, like, <laughs> oh, like this could happen to us. So <laughs> I kind of started like getting gas, getting food and stuff on last the Saturday before. And then I was kind of worried. I was like, oh, shit. And then Monday, not a lot of people showed up to work. And I was like, all right, this is, you know, this is the real deal. It is the first time I boarded up my house ever. I got a little worried right before, and I was like, oh, because it looked like it was going to make a direct hit up where I live, and then it ended up hitting cell. And that yeah, made me a little does. worried because it was like powering up to a five, then it fell to a four, went back to a five, and it was coming right. I was like, oh, man, this is not good. That did scare the piss out of me. But then after it moved, I was like, all right, 
and breathe a little bit. And then it wasn't so scary the night before, and during wasn't that bad. Afterwards was just eerie. My whole town being just blacked out at night yeah. with no power. That was crazy. Yeah, definitely. Um, Our machinist, Dan, uh, told me this morning, he said if it wasn't for the cold front, we'd all be screwed. Why? He was saying that... Oh, cold- that it... That it, that it, it- Brought it down in power. Yeah, he said the cold front's the reason it went from a five to a three. He said if we got direct hit uh-uh. with a high four or a, uh, or a five, we would have uh, every. He I said heard every, it was God. He said every house in the path would have been pancakes. So there's this. Um, somehow there's this. There's this chick that I follow on on Facebook. I don't know how, and I think maybe someone tried to set me up with her maybe 15 years ago. And she's still one of those friends on Facebook. Mm-hmm. And apparently now she's kind of really into God. And she was like, she's like, Lord Jesus, take out this man-made hurricane. <laughs> <laughs> and fucking posting these big, long posts about bring down the hand of God, Lord Jesus, and poke out the eye of that goddamn hurricane. <laughs> right? These big things. And I'm, I'm like, Lori, look at this. And I'm like, holy shit. And, and then once the eye hit, because you notice the eye broke up. Yeah. And she's like, he's like, bear witness to the power of God. <laughs> <laughs> the hand of God came down and poked out that eye of the hurricane, just like I told it to. <laughs> oh, and I was like, hell yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> It sounds like you dodged a bullet. But it wasn't the it wasn't the hand of God, Omar. It was the cold front. That's what the Dan engineer says. thinks. That's what the think. engineer thinks. Uh, but of course, the, the smartest guy who works for. Us. <laughs> <laughs> but, but what does his opinion matter? What is it, it, I mean, it was a man-made just... hurricane that got smitten down by the power of God. Do you think it's a man-made hurricane? <laughs> Fuck no. <laughs> a lot of people do. Yeah, a lot of people do. I I don't think so. I think the because of. Because of how many insane things have been brought out to be true in the last eight years, let's say, mm. it's given people a lot more leeway to believe in more and more insane things. Like, I've seen more people believing in uh, flat earth and things along those lines oh, than God. ever before. <laughs> um, we have, like, a whole, like, crew of flat earth people working for us, right? <laughs> no, we don't. We, we don't. No, the, yeah, all, we... the, whole, the whole, like, fucking hand polish people. All the people who hand polish our shit. Like, they're all... Tards. <laughs> like you're, they are flat earth Isn't people. Your, your brother's a no. My brother's not a fucking flat tire. Come on now, dude. <laughs> no, we're not kidding. Like, there's a whole like how many of them? At least three, right? There's two that are like the hardcore, the, the eldritch goddesses of flat earth, and then they kind of spread their influence amongst the ranks. <laughs> um, and I mean, again, I don't want to shit on anybody because there's a lot of insane shit that if you told me at face value, I would call you insane for that did end up being, you know. True. true. Yeah. yeah. Like the fucking chemicals in the water that turn the friggin' frogs gay. That's fucking true. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't want to shit on anybody. It's just I feel like pe- sometimes people take it a step far. They take it a step further. And sometimes they miss and they're not right. I had two weeks of, like, I'm pretty sure I'm fucking PTSD over this thing. I've never been so stressed out in my life. Yeah. That bad, huh? Oh, my God. I'm... It's like I, I didn't get unstressed out until yesterday when we got power on. And all the buildings. And all the buildings. Yeah. yeah. Like it was, I, it, it's just, so like I think like, so the, I worked until the very absolute last minute. Like Chris made me leave on Wednesday, I think. Mm-hmm. At like three, maybe. And it was just me and Chris and, and I, I stayed open um, selling ammo and stuff and doing anything I could because I knew that it would be the last time we could make money for, I don't know. Mm-hmm. And so I'm just trying to make as much as I can. And then Chris is like, and he's like, I'm, I, you need to leave. I'm like, I'll fucking stay. And, but Chris is, Chris, our compliance guy, Chris Ballard, he's like, you can't stay by yourself. It'll be, uh, it's a security risk. And I'm like, fuck it, I'll do it anyway. I don't care. I got a machine gun. <laughs> and <laughs> I got two machine guns and dogs, <laughs> you know? And, and, but, and then I left and, um, then I realized two would also happen. Um, like, so when I knew the hurricane was coming, I think on Thursday, I ordered everything I had to get, like normally go out and buy. Mm-hmm. I ordered everything on Amazon. And I only ordered from people who would get it there by Saturday. You know, I mean, like I ordered on Thursday. Yeah. And then it all got pushed to Monday. And then I got pushed to Tuesday. And then it didn't come. Yes. Right. So, yeah. so like I've got 10 stacks of bottled water that keeps sh- like showing up to my house. And, um, 
but I, I got, I did get my, I actually ordered, I think f- 50 pop tarts, <laughs> <You know? laughs> and, but it, it's so getting like when you have a bunch of kids and dogs, like we had three kids, my wife and nine dogs. And so it's my job to, to make sure they're all safe and stuff. And that was fucking pretty, pretty stressful. Like making sure they're safe, making sure they're fed, making sure the temperature's okay, making sure they have power for the iPad. And then that, and then once it, once it's coming, you're like, you saw it, like first it was going to hit in Tampa and then you're like, and then it got, it got farther South and then you woke up and it's coming right at us. And I'm like, fuck, it's coming right at us. And that's great. And I remember I, and then we have all these people who we're doing business with and they keep messaging because our guns are here. Hey, how you doing? And like, hey, you're fucking messaging me because of your guns. And but and then I send them pictures and like, oh fuck, <laughs> it's coming right at you. I'm like, yep, it's coming right at me. So and then it it comes and I'm pretty I'm pretty stressed about it. Um, and then we get through it, and then like then I'm like, okay, when's the power coming back on? And then we realize like what Milton really did was it really fucked up like the infrastructure of, of the area. It fucked up our power grid. It fucked up, um, you know, it just damaged it wind damage, I guess. And three million, like 3 million fucking people lost power. Yeah. And traditionally we get power back quick, quick as fuck. Like I know a couple of people in the power fucking world and, mm. and, and, and like the last couple of times, I called them and they're like, yeah, man, fuck yeah, we'll help you. And, and I get power back quickly. This time I'm like, hey, can you help me? And they're like, no, you're not going to get power back until at least Monday. I'm like fucking Monday? You know, because I was thinking we could all get back to work by Friday. That's what I was yeah. thinking. Thursday, Friday. Thursday, Friday. Yeah. And, we, and we'd have power. And then, and then each day of not having power, we're losing just a fucking ton mm-hmm. of money. And as a, as a small business owner, like, like there's a difference between there's in small business, there's, there's people who actually like own the business and then there's like partners and, and backers and shit like that. And that's still small business, but I'm like really small business. It's just me. Yeah. And, and, and like, I'm like probably like paycheck to paycheck, but I'm a small business. Like if my business doesn't make enough money, I, I, I don't have like weeks where i could not yeah make money like we'll fail and so that was really fucking stressful and then every day the power wouldn't come on i'd come up here four times a day at least like with the clicker right Mm -hmm. because we have these clickers that that open our automatic doors and we can't you know we can't get into the shop unless we have automatic unless the automatic doors are on or we use the thing Mm -hmm. and then we tried to get in with we tried to get in the building with all the 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 turn the cranks hard to use. none of them fucking worked <laughs> oh, man. like none of the cranks worked and all the cranks were broken all the um twisty things every one of them was broken Damn. so we couldn't get into any of the buildings and so that was stressful and then um and then i have to fucking then like and then i didn't sleep the whole time yeah i was sleeping like shit <laughs> well because i had to like so what i would do is um whatever the fuck during the daytime a lot of eating you know because i don't drink but I, i'm sure you guys are all playing video games and fucking I'm doing whatever you eating. guys do eating <laughs> eating a yeah. lot of eating right like <laughs> like like a lot of ramen noodles and sandwiches and shit like that <laughs> yeah. and whatever you know because we i found food and immediately like like whenever like the storm stopped i ran to a um like i went to every get and go every Mm. open convenience store and bought like ramen noodles and fucking chips and, and anything that like I found bacon, (laughs) (laughs) I found bacon. Yeah. And, um, but, but I would, I would sleep for two hours, like maybe like go to bed at like eight or nine or 10. And then I'd wake up at 12 and then I'd come here and I'd sleep in front of the shop. Mm -hmm. And like, I'd be in my car with my KSG and my plate carrier and um, I never wore the play carrier though. I just because I couldn't sleep in it. But I would be in, in my in my truck and fucking I and that's not really you're not really yeah, sleeping you're not any sleep. No, you're not getting any sleep. Yeah. Like you're kind of like like you you think you're sleeping, but you're not really sleeping. Like you can hear everything. It's like sleeping on a plane. Yeah. yeah. And I did, and I would sleep kind of from twelve, eleven ish to six o'clock in the morning every every night. 
So I did that every fucking day. And then, and, and until we got power or, or until like, until we got power yesterday, yesterday, mm -hmm. like that was the first time I got a good night's sleep. Ooh. Damn. Damn. Yeah. Yeah. It, it was up. Fucking sucked. It sucks so bad, dude. The crazy part, I didn't, this wasn't even like for landfall, like the strongest hurricane. But this one was had a lot of, I don't know, scary prep before it came. It was really wind. Yeah. What really fucked up everything was the, um, was just the wind and fucking up the power grid. Mm -hmm. And like, and, and did you guys think like, were you witnessing when you were out? Um, like, when I saw, when I was outside, I was looking at people and seeing how they were acting towards each other. And I'm like, I'm like, we're like this close. <laughs> I was thinking we're this close to societal collapse. <laughs> Felt that way for a long time. Yeah. Did you? Oh, yeah. Or you feel that way every day? <laughs> no, that's generally how I feel. The hurricane had nothing to do with it. Well, okay. I, I saw people being like confrontational at gas stations for sure. Like the gas station up here I was at, like people were arguing, like oh, trying to cut each other in line and like just being you know, shitty people, but that's, yeah, I mean, that's just survival of the fittest. Like yeah. people get, you know, it was like this, what's this here. vibe, this just feeling like it could be cause I'm just fucking paranoid, but it was like the whole time, especially if you went out, um, it was like, like, dude, it, it would take just a little bit more and people would be at each other's throats. Yeah. Really? Oh yeah. See up like where I live. Everyone, like, neighbors, like, helping each other out after the hurricane, helping clean up. Uh, some people that had extra gas were giving it to other people and food. And everyone was, my neighbor was helping each other out. It was the craziest thing. Gas stations, I think, were the biggest. Well, the big gas station near me is, like, the 7-Eleven. That's, like, the closest. A lot of people were going there because they had power. I don't know how. There are only people, a well, place in my whole neighborhood, whole town, that had power. And everyone was going there, but people were taking turns there was no yelling and it was like a long line to get gas too when but i it seemed like it brought everyone like closer to help each other out is what i noticed up where i live it was that's the craziest thing i was shocked about it right before the hurricane <laughs> i went to a gas station and just like luke said people were kind of you know screaming at each other mm. like somebody would pull in and use up all the gas in that pump and tell the other person there's none left and they would get out of their car and get confrontational and i'm just sitting there waiting for this one guy to fill up his 15 fucking gas yeah. tanks <laughs> just waiting on one dude i'm like i'm not going to take anybody else's spot i'm just waiting on this guy and everybody's screaming and not re really screaming but everybody's being super aggressive towards each other and then this car pulls up beside me window rolls down this british guy's like excuse me mate you waiting on that guy over there yeah, he goes, all right, it's behind me and starts waiting with me and then everybody else is still fucking screaming at each other. It was pretty funny. So you you saw it too then? Yeah. Yeah, you agree. Uh, I mean, I feel like... the It was like an eerie feeling. I or, feel like situations like these bring out underlying things that people are going through and I think it's... I would say it's more of a reflection of not necessarily like the entire society because obviously Dean's side, we saw a lot better, but it either... it's. It either brings out the best in you or the worst in you. And I feel like it, there's not much in between. It kind of reminded me of the beginning of COVID, like the yeah. first couple yeah. of weeks. Yeah. <laughs> where like you're unsure about people's motives. You're trying to get like supplies. I don't know. That's just, that's what it reminded me of. No one gave a sh absolute shit about toilet paper though. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> no one cared about toilet paper. That was crazy. <laughs> and no one cared about guns. Like, like people yeah. bought the fuck out of uh, shotguns um, every other hurricane except this one. I feel like uh, I've said this before, but I feel like you've pretty much armed all of fucking Sarah's. <laughs> <laughs> There's no one left that needs a shotgun. <laughs> well, I feel like the election will change things. Probably change things, yeah. yeah. Do you think if Trump wins, um, it'll get spicy with in the cities with liberal folk? Day of. Day of. Election day. November no 5th, there's going to be. Wins, I yeah. think that yeah. to say. November 5th, way. regardless of. I, I hope we get the answers November 5th, by the way. If I have to wait a couple of days on that, it's going to be the worst fucking two days of my life. But as soon you as. You feel that also, strongly about politics? I mean, there's a lot riding on it. A lot riding on it. I mean. <laughs> this but, one's a big one. Normally, oh. no, but this one's kind of huge. This one's going to determine, I feel like, the course of the country for a very long time. Course of the world. Yeah. Yeah. For a very long time. I mean, what's the difference? America um, number one. <laughs> uh, yeah, the I feel like the day that 
the results are announced no matter who wins there's going to be violence especially what i've been telling a lot of people is like down because i've got a lot of people coming up to me and being like hey i'm scared what should i do really so, yeah a, a lot of my mom's friends come to me because they know i work at a gun shop and okay. they come to me and they're like do i need to do i need to you know learn how to use the gun i'm like yeah i, I think everybody should have something in their house but it's not going to be nearly as bad down here. We've got a badass governor who takes care of things. Everybody's got a gun. Like in, in places like, you know, Sarasota, Florida, or just most red places, I would say, it's not going to be terrible because people know not to fuck around because they know they're going to find out. Correct, yeah. Deep blue cities, that's where, like I tell them, if you've got any relatives that are living in, you know, any big blue city, tell them to get a gun and keep it in the house and learn how to use it because that's where things aren't very good. You know, it happened to my, um, you know, the, the, the guy who inherits everything, right? I've told you before, my, my mm. nephew, mm -hmm. my nephew who, who, who met his wife at the Black Lives Matter rally. Yeah. Right. So um, very liberal. Um, so he lives in New Jersey where, you know, people don't carry. And, and somebody, so somebody got into road rage with, with each other and they're sitting there and yeah, 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 yeah getting in road rage and one of them fucking road rage too much and hit the other guy and fucking slant and then went into the other lane and hit my cousin or not my nephew head on. Oh, their car or the car. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That would really suck. Yeah. Is he now you, right? No, oh. <laughs> no, he Sorry. broke his pelvis. He broke like he, like he's it's happened about 35 days ago and he can barely walk. Like he just took his Dang. first steps. Yeah. It's heartbreaking, well, but my point of it, like, you don't really hear that in our neck of the woods because yeah. everybody carries. Yeah, our yeah. society. Out, like you said, yeah. you know what I mean. Everybody carries. You know, because in in our world, right? If you road rage, someone pulls the gun, the other person pulls the gun, and then they pull over, and but that doesn't happen. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, like you, like you hear about when the lawyer came in. He's like, you know, people get caught for brandishing firearms during road rage. You know, like you, like someone flashes the gun and another person runs and narks. He pulled a gun, uh, you know, and then, and then cops are called. But you never hear people pulling guns and then shooting each other. You never hear like people, am I right? Yeah, or, I agree. I mean, I, I, I truly believe an armed society is a polite society. Right. Cause you don't know, like, don't like, don't fuck around. Yeah. Yeah. Or you, or you might find out it's a, uh, but I was thinking I got the chance to shoot the Strybog which is right here. The other day with the night vision, this would be a perfect platform for your mother's friends. Just like that's you thought. I, yeah. That's what I was thinking. Cause I, I did a lot of thinking about it. The, the main way it kind of came about is basically my mom came to me and was like, Hey, I've got a bunch of, you know, single old, older ladies that nice. don't have <laughs> <laughs> you need to bring loot <laughs> but they're basically saying that they want to you know nice. <laughs> they want to have something in the house just in case something happens and i was thinking a lot about what to recommend to them because obviously they're they just want something to have and keep and that's not ideal i would much rather people go out and train but i know that's not realistic they're not going to be training with that very much they're just going to have it just in case. So I was thinking a, a rifle is probably not a very good idea, like a full, you know, an AR, as amazing as they are, there's a lot of power in 5.56. Five, and if you're not training a lot with it and you miss and you hit drywall, it's going straight fucking through. Straight through. And Unless yeah, I, you use Liberty ammo. Oh, yeah. Liberty ammo is pretty good. But uh, it's also going to be ridiculously loud. And if you're not ridiculously loud if you're not used to shooting without ear pro on the first time that round goes off who knows what the reaction is going to be all these things i was considering shotguns and no-go way too much recoil it was basically i was contemplating recommending handguns but also at the end of the day handguns are worse than a rifle platform in literally every way other than size they're compact but you give away you give up every other advantage that and you have. And the novice isn't very accurate. Exactly. It's much harder yeah. to be accurate with a handgun than it is with Big any time. sort of rifle. Mm -hmm. So I was doing a lot of thinking. I thought PCC is probably a great choice. You have you shot the Strybog before? Mm -hmm. Did you shoot it the other day? Uh, I didn't shoot it the other day, but I've shot both the A1s and the A3s. Where? At Kevin's. People is, he has people. Oh, people over there have them. Yeah, people bring them out. Yeah. I, so I've sold these things for... I don't know, fucking 10 years. And I never shot one until like the other day. 
and it's they're amazing. It looks fun. I want one. Oh my god, they're so yeah. fucking badass. I mean, they're they're very affordable, especially for PCC prices. For whatever reason, PCCs are dumb money. Like a nine mil version of an AR is double the price of five five six version of the same exact model for some reason. Oh, it's not double, but yeah. I mean, it, I mean, they're I'm expensive. exaggerating, yeah. but yeah, the, PCCs are generally way more expensive than five five six rifles are, just because they're I guess less common. Yeah. Um, Strybugs have always been an amazing choice ever since the A1 you brought them in because they work. They work well. They have flip-up iron sights and a threaded barrel out of the box. I mean, you've got everything you need. It comes with three mags, and most of them come with a brace. Like, it's 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 a very good deal. And then the A3 came out, and it's just a better Strybog in virtually every way. It's a little bit more money, but now you're now you're slowly getting away from the downsides of, like, a straight blowback because the A1s are straight blowback. The A3s are roller delayed. So how much more recoil is the straight blowback? It's definitely punchier. It's punchier. Yeah. Because there's no recoil in that thing. Yeah. A roller delayed is a lot more of a smooth push, and yeah. straight blowbacks are a lot punchier. But the main thing is, especially if you're running it suppressed, straight blowbacks, they are gassy as fuck. There's, it, those are the ones that spit in your face. Yeah. And that was kind of like the biggest complaint about the A1. It's not even a complaint about the Strybox. It's just a complaint about uh, straight blowback uh, rifles in general. Uh, like pistol caliber carbines in general, is that they're very, very gassy. What A3 do you think not... in, in recoil um, versus like like a, an MP5? MP5 is definitely going to be smoother shooting just because it's way oh, heavier. Oh, I don't know, man. It's way heavier. I don't know, dude. Like, I mean, it, it sounds fucking... Yeah. Um, I've got a lot of time behind an MP5 and a lot of time behind a TP9 and just about every other... Um, fucking PCC. Like, I have a lot. And I think the... A3, I think oh man, there's like there's a certain feel to the MP5. Like it's like a it's almost like riding riding an animal or something. Like it's you feel it like it you know, and it's smooth, but I think the Strybog is 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 up there. Sure. I'd really like to I mean, get both of them and, and shoot them and see exactly but I can't I couldn't imagine how comfortable the fucking thing was. Yeah. The the weights is gonna the weight is gonna be the biggest thing. People don't realize just how heavy MP5s are. Like MP5s. Oh yeah, they're heavy. A, f a stock MP5 is heavier than my setup rifle, my you know 5.56 rifle. Uh, an MP5K is the same weight as a Danny V7. Really? Yeah. I don't know about that, man. It is. It is. I can guarantee you. It, 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 it because it's such a smaller package, people don't think don't about it. Don't you make a lot. me pull out my MP5? I'll pull it out right now. <laughs> no, an, an MP5K is the same weight as a Daniel Defense DDM4 V7. A 16-inch 5.56 rifle. They're the same weight. I don't know. I don't know about that, man. Jamie, pull it up. <laughs> <laughs> Just think about it. It has a polymer lower. Uh, MP5 has a polymer lower. And polymer furniture. You said the K. Mm -hmm. The smaller one. Yep. No, you're wrong. Think so? I know so. You know so. so no, I mean, I, I shoot a lot. I shoot these things a lot. It's pretty fucking badass, though. So. Look at that. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> now I kind of want that. <laughs> it's sick, right? Yeah. yeah. Sorry, Professor Omar, but I don't agree. What do you think? I don't know. No. Hell no. I don't know. It's it's close, but here. Well, that one doesn't have anything on the back. I'll just say. Oh, They're... so it has to have something on the back. Well, I mean, you got to compare apples to apples here. This okay. Like stock. This one, if you put a stock on it, they're going to be the same weight. Like, hold, hold one in each hand. I understand the weight distribution is different, so it's going to be. Uh, it's not going to feel the exact same. There's no way. Ah. Uh... I get it. Hold on. But MP5s are heavy guns. Again, no, I mean, especially because uh, depending upon the stock you get. Oh, yeah, here you go. Okay, here. It's 
It's got more shit on it. It does not. <laughs> it does shit. Not. It's got a magnifier on it. Oh, it's got a magnifier. It does not. It does not. It does not. I might be wrong. But MP5s are heavy. I don't know if they're relatively heavy. Relatively heavy there. compared to PCCs, yeah. But I, I know you can definitely build out a 16-inch rifle, or you can buy a 16-inch rifle, 5.56, five, that is lighter or the same weight as, like, an MP5 with a stock on it. I like shotguns. Shotguns are cool. So I used, I, I, I carried my shotgun and guarded the shop with my shotgun. Yeah? Yeah. KFP? Yeah. yeah. No matter how embarrassing that is. <laughs> Did you have the salvo on it? Oh, yeah. Nice. I, I posted a picture on it on the internet, and someone was like, that's the fucking stupidest kid I've ever seen. <laughs> I'm like, well, I'm actually, guarding, I'm actually guarding a shop with it. It works. I think, um, I don't know, but, but if, if it was like, I think that if I had robbers or looters, coming into the shop and I had to guard the shop from the front, I would rather have a shotgun, especially if there's multiple people. You would disagree, Omar. You think the, K the KFC is a shitty kit? No, I don't. Okay. I did see that comment that was really funny. <laughs> did you see where I said, your mama sucks my dick? Yeah. <laughs> that was a comment. Well, well, you said, yo mama, and then an eggplant emoji. Well, because you can't put <laughs> suck my dick on Instagram. They get mad. <laughs> Your egg plant of is not yeah. This is what I was talking about. MP five K PDW with this that. configuration with the MP five K stock and the pistol grip is six point five pounds. A Daniel Defense V seven is six point two pounds. So it, uh, it's that stock. It's probably the stock, yeah. yeah. But I mean if you're comparing, like I said, apples to apples, MP fives are ridiculously heavy. Do you know the urban legend why the stock is heavy? So you can Beat someone in the face. So you can beat it? somebody in the face. <laughs> you know, do you know that, Luke? Butt strike no, is very effective. That, no. They changed the... So the original stock that they were using, um, I, I hear from, from the, our old production manager, the... Not really sure what he was, but yeah. he, <laughs> he, he told me that, like, they changed... Because I got that authentic stock on my, the... I got it from... It's a real one. Yeah. And when I changed it, it was so fucking much. It was so heavy. I was like, what the fuck? This is stupid. And he's like, no, this is good. That's goodwill. You want that? I said, why do you want that? He said, because. Hit someone in the face with it. <laughs> Hit someone in the face with the other one. It's going to break. This will do it. Cave their face in. <laughs> yeah, he, he was very concerned about the durability of stocks because he told me that he's seen a lot of like scar stocks break in the yeah. field at the hinges and stuff he was a very big proponent of like the a2 m16 stocks and like just big solid heavy stocks that aren't going anywhere not breaking not breaking apparently, not breaking is important apparently you trip and fall a lot and if you fall on your stock or if you need to clear out you know a malfunction with a mortar you don't uh, you yeah. want your stock to yeah. be solid yeah that makes sense it's it's funny like so when i sat in in the truck and, and guarded the shop. Like, like, like the first night I, I took both, I took uh, the spear and I took the KSG. And then the second night I was like, I'm just taking, I, and then the handguns, of course. But, um, like I really, it came down to like almost instinctual. Like yeah. what, what do I feel more comfortable with in, in, in like the possible situation of the people coming? Yeah. yeah I, I, like it's weird when something like this happens and you're a gun guy and you have all out of guns like it shows you like what you're you know what i'm saying like it like forces you to pick what you i don't know i don't know I what you're, what you're like, saying yeah you can have a whole room full of guns but at the end of the day if you actually need to use it you're grabbing one yeah you're not going around like igor carrying fucking six pkms on his back <laughs> yeah <laughs> but it's um I don't know. It's almost like it's either instinctual or God or, or, or just your body muscle memory. Something says, you know, you take that mm -hmm. in this situation. This is what you want. Take that, you know, and um, maybe cause it's, it's, it's like the KSG has 13 rounds and, and, and it's, I've been affected with it for so many years. I'm not sure. I'm probably the only fucking person in the gun industry who will admit he still uses a KSG. <laughs> <laughs> 
I don't. I haven't seen anybody talk about it. Anybody take pictures with them, except me. <laughs> John Wick made him cool again for a little bit. He did. He did. He did. Well, I mean, we haven't sold one in at least a year. <laughs> the cool thing about them, if you're like protecting something, you can do like one tube with like bean backgrounds. And the other two with like buckshot. So no, I just roll double lot bucking. <laughs> <laughs> I have well, I've that brings a really interesting point is right now shotguns, the big thing that they're gonna be being utilized for again in warfare is taking out drones, which yeah. you want birdshot for. It would actually probably make a lot of sense if you were again, I would Ooh. not want to go to war with a KSG, but if you were to want to take something that has the ability to take out drones and m- breaching potential. It would make a lot of sense to put bird in one cylinder, or not cylinder, one, uh, bird in one tube, buck in the other, and then if you see a drone, you just click. Drones are scary. Something to think about. I feel like birdshot shotguns are going to be a combat weapon. Do you guys? Very soon. You would have. There's probably. I've been. You know, what I really did. Do, I looked at a lot um, during my day. I looked at like I like Ukraine kit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like I looked at, I, I researched, I research, I researched, I watched a lot of fucking videos on what people's kit is in Ukraine. Whatever they can get. Yeah. Whatever they can get. <laughs> Whatever they can get. Holosons are now a battle proven optic. Yeah. But yeah. <laughs> and the sure. Russian optics suck really bad. Russian everything sucks really bad. It, well, I mean, yeah. No, the rails don't suck. The what? The, the Zenicos? The Zenicos don't. Oh, yeah, say. but those aren't made by the government. Those are made by a private company, and only only people who will go out and buy it with their own money pretty much get so it. So I found one guy who, he called them trophies, and he would get trophies, and then the Russian stuff, and then demo it and do videos mm-hmm. on the, on the, have you seen that guy? Yeah, yeah. You fucking know everybody. <laughs> no, Z- Zenico stuff is amazing, but that's not what the guys are being issued. But no, did you see the guy, and he, he, he. Talked about like the the Russians fake EOTech mm-hmm. with their with their magnifier, yeah, the, the, the one PS yeah nine, and he, he talked about how bad that magnifier is, how bad mm-hmm. you know, and and but yeah, the Ukrainians would I guess they were issued stuff, and then they would just try to upgrade with either their own money or donations or or and then like getting anything Western is the thing to do. What I find really funny is there's a lot of stuff that they can't get. That's Western, but a lot of people that are in the Eastern Bloc that copy it, that they get clones for. So, like, STAC mag pouches are very sought after, but you can't get STAC mag pouches. So, uh, the Kiwis, so they have, like, a Ukrainian off-brand that makes that, uh, some that are really similar. And they do this with a lot of different equipment, where they're just straight up, like, Chinese copying. Yeah, they have, that, they have that thermal, though, that's really good. Oh, yeah. There's, there's the, stuff they have that's really good, but I find it really funny, especially when it comes to like kit and body armor. It reminds me a lot of the gun shows. <laughs> yeah. Which yeah. is like, well, a, that, like some, a lot of that. So I saw um, a video with like, it was some British video and it, they were showing exactly what they got for each person in Ukraine. And like each, each new soldier in Ukraine that they trained, they would send them home with a kit with kit. And it was fucking Chinese and bullshit. Like whatever they can get their hands on, and then and then I guess that's not what they're using. Like you, and, but it's all stuff that they get themselves. Yeah, I mean, oh wow. One thing yeah. there there is a bias to it because most of the stuff that you're seeing are the guys who can at least afford the camera on their head to record themselves committing war crimes and upload it onto Telegram. So they're probably going out of their way to buy the better stuff. But I would argue. Do you have a Telegram that, account? Yeah. You got to show me how to do this stuff so I can witness these war crimes. It's, <laughs> dude, it's, it's actually insane because now there are drone. There, there's so many people in the war right now that are straight up making content with murder. Um, oh, yeah. And it's there. There are these drone. Are accounts. Oh, yeah. There are these drone <laughs> accounts now that literally sell uh, advertising space on the bottom feet of the camera. They physically print it out and tape it in front of the camera of the drone so as you're watching this drone toy with a wounded russian soldier going making passes at him making him scared before blowing him up you're looking at this ad for like this gambling website and <laughs> are you serious i'm 100 and they use the money they make from the ad revenue to go and buy better stuff with their own money because they're not being issued the better stuff so if you have an ak that's got no rail system or a really shitty one that won't hold zero you go out and you start making content advertising gambling websites and the money you make from that, you buy a Zenit Co. Railway. Oh, wow. So speaking of drones, 
Do you guys know what the master key is? The shotgun? Yeah. No. Do you think the so it's like a shotgun that it's like an M203 <laughs> shotgun. It's an underbarrel shotgun, yeah. This is our section of the podcast <laughs> devoted to Luke's forgotten weapons. No. Okay, well, Knights Armament made the master key and now they're making clones now. Do you think that's going to be something that no. could be you don't think that would be I don't think so. The, no, it's someone... not barrel length. That's a dedicated breaching tool. It's master key cuz it opens doors. You're yeah, not... but every you... every so I think that every squad will have somebody with or multiple people with um if it if if I would guess like JM pros. Yeah, right. I, I think that's much more likely is having a dedicated shotgunner or like two or or a couple. Yeah, I I think the Really short barrel, under barrel shotgun format is strictly for breaching. You're not going to. No, yeah, want... well, I mean, it was made before drones. I'm saying, like, could you make something? No, you don't have the distance. You'd be you'd be weighing down your primary weapon to a point where you're making it less effective, uh, in exchange for gaining a shittier version of a capability that somebody else could be dedicated no, to have. It'd be an exercise in futility. There's no distance to the the one. I mean. You I've, just you just saw Predator over the fucking. <laughs> no, I think I've shot more, I I've think, shot clays with eighteen inch shotguns before. Eight, eighteen. Yeah, that's very eighteen inches. Before. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, I'm not saying ex just using that. I Luke's forgotten something, weapons. Something similar to that. <laughs> I think in the a, same a under barreled shotgun that would be. Let's say you have it on sixteen. That would be, I don't know, fourteen inches. No, because that would be so much. I think the much more likelier option would be. Just having like one of those super light over unders just on your back that you can pull out, because then you wouldn't be weighing down and adding all of this shit onto your primary weapon that you know you're depending your life on. I think the yeah, but, but people add M. I mean M two hundred three. That's not a, nearly as often anymore. I, I I I don't think so. At least I feel like that even that has moved towards standalone. That, you're right. You're right. No, Luke, it's too small. It's not effective. I know, like you have a dream of seeing these again, <laughs> I, but it's too small. It's not effective. There will know. be somebody, there's probably people right now, right now they probably have some type, of, the, the gun that would probably win the contract would be a JM Pro. Because SIG doesn't have a fucking shotgun. Yeah, I'm sure they're sure. thinking about making one. They want to corner the market in every field. So. Exactly. And I'm, I'm sure they're, they're, they will, oh, shot shot, I bet they'll yeah, watch yeah. Yeah. <laughs> to shoot fucking drones down. You heard it first. <laughs> you know what I mean? But, um... Man, do you want to like? Do you want to hear a fucking bad story? So if you if you ever needed enough another reason for fucking regime change, and, and the, besides the wonderful interview, Kamala Harris gave last <laughs> night. <laughs> All right, so so we lost like so we were closed basically eight days, and we lost eight days of revenue. I know it's 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 probably hard for for people normal people to believe like like that's fucking a killer for me, like I can't like it's it's bad. So right when my assistant got internet at her house, I'm like, hey, will you clock in and and hit up FEMA to see what type of aid we can get the employees and what type of aid we can get for the business? So she looked up. You know, and she sent you an email um, to, to send, did you get the email? To my work email? or Yeah. So, like one of your. <laughs> yeah, I got it. Cause you're tagged on it. Yeah, you're oh, tagged yeah. on it, Omar. But my, and she sent like a form for anybody. Like this is like you, like everybody's, everybody can get $1,200 because they were out without power for. That's a loan. Right. I understand. You don't get the $1,200. You got to pay it back. I understand, but some people, when they need twelve hundred dollars, well, oh, yeah, gladly. Sure. There's things called credit cards, but they're not giving you shit. They want to. No, I, I know they're not giving you shit. <laughs> I know, but still, like, do you want some? Anyway, <laughs> so you can take a loan or aid for twelve hundred dollars, um, and I think once you take it, you can actually you can petition the government to not pay it back because that's how it was during COVID. That works. That usually works out great. Petitioning the government to not pay them more money. Hey, buddy, <laughs> works out great with the IRS. I've heard. I'm the one who pays a lot of taxes, <laughs> right? I anyway, so so we um we sent like and then so as a small business, you cannot qualify for any aid from FEMA. Do you know that? Yeah, they no. ran out of money. That's no, no, no. It, you, you, there's no like an individual can, but an employer cannot 
does not qualify for any aid. Like, you know, I can't, I, but so what I do qualify for is something called the SBA small business disaster loan, right? So what you do is you, is you provide the government with data that says, this is how much I made for this many weeks. Um, and you average it and that's what you can get. If you can prove according to their guidelines, if you can prove how much you made and we have all the data, at least Sandy does, then you, they will, they will scratch you a check for that amount. Mm -hmm. Like, so we made, you know, X amount of dollars, like, so, which is a lot, um, we could get that loan. Right. So I had Sandy do it day one. Day one, she did it and sent it out. I get a call yesterday. It's an automated call. And and they're like, hi, thank you very much for applying to the SBA Hurricane Milton Disaster Small Business Loan. We regret to inform you that A, your application was done incorrectly. And B, FEMA had no longer has any money allocated for aid. Until the till Congress reconvenes and allocates such aid, they flat out said there's they, no, no money. They flat out said there's no money. So, like, the, my point is, like, the whole you've heard all these, all these, all these people talk about how FEMA has no money to give to people, mm-hmm. and you're like, you're like, oh, maybe it's bullshit. And but no, there is. So, and I applied for money that would help us. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And and. Not even an, an automated fucking call, an automated call called up and said, fucking, we have no more money and we will not have any more money until Congress reconvenes and allocates the money. Do you know what Congress did yesterday? No. $425 million to Ukraine. That was yesterday. Well, your generation voted for him. Do not <laughs> bundle me in. Yeah, your generation voted bundle. for fucking that dude, dude. What dude? The Biden guy. The Biden guy. Yeah, you really? guys, you guys voted for him. Really? You're putting me in. You're putting me in this camp. <laughs> Standing here. <laughs> you did, you did work at Starbucks. I. What does that have to do with anything? <laughs> you worked. It, 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 your people. Those are your people. I got free coffee. You're paying seven dollars a cup, motherfucker. <laughs> I don't buy seven dollar a cup coffee. But yeah, four hundred twenty-five million to Ukraine. We also sent God knows how many millions of dollars. Well. Like I get it. I get those are those are sound bites. Those are sound bites. Those are are posts to get clicks and shit. Like that's like shit that that just gets you pissed off that you see every day on Instagram. But I mean, it's reality. It, we, it is. We, but you we don't spent half a billion dollars. FEMA specifically spent half a billion dollars on migrants. That's what you say. That's what I. That's what I say. That's what I've heard. But it's not really provable to like the average man like no it's like the same it's like the it's like when you tell somebody something that you know is fucking true they're and eating they're like, the dogs <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's like when you tell somebody on, on on social media or hanging out you're like oh this is what happened no it's not prove that oh trust me like no. what are you talking about no it's true no it's not prove yeah. that you know what i mean like when when the atf was raiding shops for frt triggers and one of my friend's shops one of my friends' shop got raided by the ATF for, for FRT triggers. And I put a post up. I'm like, hey, this is happening. It happened. Oh, yeah. at my, and no one fucking believed me. People were like, you can't. That's fucking, you're lying. I'm like, what? what you, I know the dude. You know, it's the same, but same thing. My point is, is, is we know it. I know it. But, like, you never have, you never know any, I never know anybody. I don't know anybody who has firsthand knowledge of it. And I fucking got a call from the government. Yeah, we don't have any money. You're fucked. That's that's scary. It's, yeah, like what what the fuck? Yeah, and it's, so if you ever need a reason for regime change, because all of our money went to Ukraine, four hundred fifty what billion or million? Four hundred twenty-five million dollars to Ukraine. Was... And I'm just I'm just kidding. I'm not really. Oh mad. no, I get it. No, you don't. You're mean, pissed. What, no, what, <laughs> he's angry. <laughs> what I'm pissed off about is all the people who will use sound bites against the argument. Like they'll be like, well, no. We're not actually sending money to Ukraine. We're just sending them our old munitions. We immediately pay our defense contractors that amount of money to replace the munitions that we sent over. We are never, the United States military 
is never going to be in a deficit of munitions. If we're sending $400 million worth of munitions to Ukraine, we are immediately paying $400 million plus to our yeah. defense contractors yeah. to <laughs> refill our supply. So whenever people go out and say, oh, we're not actually sending them money, we, we're either sending it to them or we're giving it to Raytheon. Like there's... <laughs> right. But it's a, I mean, you know, it's, it's not fucking cool. No. Like, like our, like I could use that money. That would, that would help. But well, we'll fucking survive. If you're in North Carolina, you do get $750. I know, I know a chick who fucking applied for that and got, and they said no. Yeah. <laughs> One of my, uh, like I know, I here. know a chick from 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 Asheville, and and she applied for that, and they're like, nope, she didn't have work for three weeks, and then she moved down here and and to the other coast or or some shit. Yeah. They got to get about. Congress together to give the U.S. citizens uh, any amount of aid, but president can executive order send millions of dollars abroad. Exactly, like that's crazy. Do you know how we got power back, Dean? Yeah, yeah. So we didn't have like so. Every day I'm going to my production building like a crackhead trying to get into it. And I can't because there's fucking 60 people that need to go back to work. And, and I need to take the money that they generate so I can pay our fucking bills. And every day I'm going to my production building, you know, clicking it, hoping and praying that the fucking, that the electric comes on. And usually, you know, we would get electric pretty fast. And, but this time, no. And then, and then I'm sitting there doing something like I'm, I think I'm paying, like I'm doing, I'm paying bills in the back and Andrew fucking, like I hear somebody walk through the door quickly and, <laughs> and, and it's, and he's like, Will, Will, Will. Yeah. He's like the guy who asked about the honey badger. Yeah. Uh, he's got 97 crews on Anna Maria Island right now fixing electric. I, I, I think he'll fix it for you. I'm like, are you fucking with me, Andrew? He's like, no, I'm serious. And like, so there's a guy out there who's was like a, like, he's like, I asked him if he's a lineman and he said, he's not a lineman. He used to be a lineman, but he runs lineman. He runs 97 crews on Anna Maria right now. I'm like, uh, I think he'll help us. And so by the time I came up, like I fucking dropped my shit, ran out here in, in the, the retailer or the, um, sales floor. And he was gone. I'm like, what the fuck is he, Andrew? And, and he's like, I think he's over there. And then I, I, I run across the street and there's this dude with a hard hat on, you know, like walking around. And he's like, yeah, man, I can fix this. <laughs> I'm like, what? And he's like, all it is is there's a, there's a, there's a line right there. It's supposed to go over here. And it got broke. You just got to fix that. Take about 20 minutes. I'm like, really? Yeah, man. I get crew out here about four to five minutes. Okay. That'd be all right for you. I'm like, Yeah. And I shit you not, the guy fucking, the guy, 45 minutes later, like, like, like I was, I was, went back in the back and paid more bills and then came out. I'm like, fuck, is, is, is he there? And then I look and, and sure, sure, sure as shit, there's two trucks out there. Yeah, and, and, line. and then I, and then I, I go out there and I'm like, uh, you guys, you're like, yeah, we'll be done about 20 minutes. And sure as shit, they got our power back on. And I asked the guy, I'm like, well, were we going to get power? And he's like, nope. You weren't getting shit. Like, why? Like, well, because you're only one business. And there's only you and the liquor store are attached. And so you're the only two people out of, out of power over here. So we're not going to spend time on you guys. We, we, we can go do 20 homes. I'm like, but when was I going to get electric? Can't tell you, buddy. Sure shit. Sorry, man. But then they, then they pulled, then they, they got the electrical. I, I fucking, I think I went in the back and cried. Yeah. Went to the bathroom and fucking got teary-eyed. All I saw was you told me power's going to be back on in 20 minutes, show up to work. By the time I showed up, they were just about completed. And as I got out of my car, all I heard was you speaking to that lineman going, there's a man in that building that will suck your dick <laughs> right now. <laughs> I didn't want to say that, but I said there are two men in that building over there who will suck your <laughs> cock right now. For getting us power. <laughs> His name's Luke. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Luke. No, don't worry about like that. I don't suck dick for power. I'm not Kamala Harris. <laughs> <laughs> All six of them came over, though. Holy shit. <laughs> they did, too. They did. They bought some guns, didn't they? 
They did. We gave him we gave him sick deals on everything. We gave him all we gave him all bear mace. Like I said, I said, why don't you guys go home and have a six pack and then if I can have a bear mace fight and, <laughs> and film it. <laughs> we gave him but yeah, we gave him like like one gun, we gave him like five hundred off. We gave they bought two guns, we gave them five hundred off on each. Um, we gave him shirts, bear mace, stickers, patches, and then I took a picture with him. Yeah, I saw the picture. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, it was it was total fucking god thing. See, Omar, miracles do happen. Mm-hmm. That was a miracle. Like, yeah, like what yeah. what are the fucking odds? Yeah. Like what like like especially cause what if like fucking Stu talked to one of them? <laughs> You know what I mean? Like the guy comes in who can fix her power and Stu gets him. Hey, man, you want to talk about fish, the Grateful Dead? I'm just <laughs> deadhead. You know what I mean? And and then Andrew just happened to notice. Oh, This man. guy's got a reflective coat? No. <laughs> no, he was like a boss of the reflected coat guys. He nice. didn't, yeah, he didn't, he didn't, he was just a happy little tan dude. He was kind of tan. and He did us a solid though. That fucking was, solid. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, and then when I, then when I, um, when they were over there doing it, I was like, fuck internet, your building. Yeah. And then I, I called the guy. I'm like, sure shit. They're here fixing. I'm like, look, I've got another building. You think you can do that one too? And he's like, I don't know, man, send me that address. And then I, I texted him the address and he's like, I got you, man. And they went and fixed that one too. I went over there to talk to him out there. I don't know if you're in the building. That loud pop that went off. Did you yeah. hear that? Oh, yeah. And someone called and said it was a gunshot. That was them up on the pole. They just popped one of the fuses up there. Oh, did they really? Yeah, because I went over there to say they were okay. And they said, yeah, that was us. I was like, yeah, there's a cop in here right now. I'm thinking they had a <laughs> Declan discharge or something. But it was just them. And they said, we're going to re- redo the uh, fuse and everything will be okay. Yeah, but it's um right when we got the power back, I was like, fuck. <laughs> Relief. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's it's hard. Like you can't. I mean, how are we supposed to pay all the people if we can't produce commerce? Yeah, you know what I mean. And but God's good all the time. We were lucky. What do you think of the H uh, the HK? No, oh, the CC nine. Yeah, the CC nine. I like cool. it. The communist China nine. <laughs> I like it, and I don't usually like a lot of new guns, but the trigger on it was really nice. It felt good in hand. It did feel a little top heavy, but I, I would like to shoot one to see how you no know, it handles in your hand. But from touching it and playing with it, and I, I like it. I feel like I want one. I was surprised by the price. I figured it'd be eight hundred bucks. Okay, it's a probably the cheapest HK that exists. Yes, and they yeah. apparently yes. I, I've looked into it a little bit. They've been testing it for a while. Like they've had that thing made, and they've just been beating the fuck out of it this whole time. Three years. Yeah. Oh wow. Uh, Three HK, years they've had it in America, beating the shit out of it. HK is notorious for just over testing their guns, which is amazing. Uh, my opinion on it is, it's cool that they're offering a micro nine. Uh, I feel like every company is offering a micro nine now. Uh, there's nothing about it that's really different enough to where I would see a reason to upgrade from another micro nine. For somebody who's buying their first one, I feel like it's a great choice. But there's not that. There's no catch to it. I, I wouldn't get rid of my current Micro 9 to upgrade to a CC9. I think it's the first foray into like HK taking market share. Oh, I mean, the yeah. connotations of the gun are amazing. The fact that they're making guns here in the U.S. now and they don't, we don't have to worry about all that stupid European shit. Like, I ran away from the European shit. I don't want to deal with that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, it's, it's not cool. You know, like the European shit is not cool. Like them, like their thought process behind... You know, they're anti 2 a Like, there's no Second Amendment in Europe. Yeah. Because, you know, if the poor people get armed, they'll kill the rich people, yeah. according to history. But, I mean, it, it's even beyond just being anti, you know, Second Amendment or whatever. Germany's government quite literally despises gun manufacturers. Like, the only reason HK is still so prevalent is because it's pretty much in cahoots with the German government. But any other, like, SIG got kicked out and the owner of SIG almost got arrested because they were making guns in Germany. They it's not why they got arrested, but they, they, he did get arrested yeah. and um yeah, there maybe we maybe we can ask them that when they come to the podcast. Yeah, I, I mean, from what I, I I don't have a super in-depth understanding of how Germany treats gun manufacturers, but from what I've heard, they fucking hate them. They do not like them at all. But I'm very excited to see the US market cuz they can actually bring forward things that we're we're probably never going to see over here like everybody says MP7, 
uh, uh, I think it's possible. Oh, is is that the like talk of the internet or people thinking or people like praying that they'll bring over MP sevens yeah. and other stuff? Oh, uh, they are. I really want to see the four thirty seven. I really want to see their the blackout thing. Yeah, their, their piston gun. I, uh, we I, it would be really about cool that to last see that. time. Yeah. But uh, there's so many HK H- makes so many guns that just you cannot get your hands on anymore, uh, just because Germany refuses to sell it here. I just I I've got a feeling that they're going to try to really take market share from the U.S. gun manufacturers, and and they wouldn't build a plant. You know what I mean? They wouldn't take the money. I mean, like they built a fucking plant. Mm-hmm. You know, like to to make sure that their guns are built to spec, and it's not like, you know, they. I think that they're going to really try to do some damage, and I'm excited. If they have nice prices like that, they will. Um, yeah, the yeah, pricing is crazy. Yeah, because yeah. all the VP9s are what 800 bucks, 900 bucks. Yeah, that I was 100. percent I would have put money down that that, that thing would have been over 800 dollars MSRP. No, not- they they knew like they we had a we had a meeting with them and they yeah. they told me about it coming and I was like I was like yeah fucking 800 dollars right and they're like no no. It'll be it'll be competitive, Which and it, it is. Was. Yeah, you know it's cheaper than the than the Glock MOS. I think. Might be. Yeah. No wait, the Glock MOS is five fifty. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I mean it's right. it's RMSC cut, and it's got a good trigger, and it's got twelve rounds. It's what people are actually asking for, which usually doesn't go hand in hand with HK. Yeah. HK usually does not deliver what people are asking for. They do. Yeah, what the opposite. Yeah. I don't think anybody asked for that fucking box. <laughs> yeah, that, <laughs> the box kind of. So this is the new CC9 HK. Luke really likes it. I do really like it. It's uh, I feel like they just like took all the best features from all the other micro nines and put it into this. Oh, it's fucking boxy though. It is a little boxy. It doesn't but. feel like a VP9. Like a VP9 feels good in your hand. There's like almost no sharp edges to it, though. Apart from like the rail, it, it's a very beveled gun, which good for carrying around. Like it's not gonna have those super sharp edges that ridiculously print. Oh, so what do you, what do you think you, of it, Will? Do you not like it? I don't think I. It's. I mean, I've got fucking Hobbit hands, so it's not that comfortable in my hand. Mm-hmm. Um, but I mean, I just look at it like if it's a really well-made gun, then I'm pretty happy with it. Yeah, because the the you know there's reliability issues in pretty much every CC, pretty much every carry gun, and there's reliability issues beyond a Glock. You know, like so if you like if you shoot your your three sixty five a thousand times, it's gonna you're gonna wear out parts and shit. If you like like the only gun that really doesn't have reliability issues, I think that are carry guns is the Glock forty three X MOS. And then everything else, I think, has has a problem here and there. Like you can't beat the shit. Like the three sixty five is not made to be beat the shit out of. It's made. It's made for the average person who wants to carry. One thing I will say about this versus the three sixty five, which people don't seem to talk about a lot, is you can't bend the frame on this thing by <laughs> pinching it. Three sixty fives, though, though, in order to make the magazine capacity the way it is, the walls on the frame are so oh, thin. Yeah, you can grab onto it. And literally just bend it inwards. You can't do that with this thing, which is a plus in my book. I do not like six polymer though. <laughs> I like it. Yeah, I like it. Yeah, I mean, I too. just, I, it gets me excited because it's something else to to sell. It gets me excited because I think HK is gonna. I mean, I want HK to bring more guns because I like, I like gun. Like, I want that fucking blackout, the four thirty. I want that thing. It'd be insane yeah. if like they started even re-releasing guns that they currently imported from Germany, but either making them at a cheaper price point or more accustomed to the U.S. market. Yeah, that, I mean, the AR, the new AR is coming. The new AR is coming? Uh-huh. Like a 416? Yeah, there's a patent on it. Really? Yeah, the, the, like that, I think, like, I, I think they, like, I think they're fucking coming. I think that, like, how can you not be a big, huge German company and see what SIG has done and say, fuck, maybe yeah. we should do that? I'm convinced HK does not like money. <laughs> like they, they could have made millions like that by just releasing a product they already make to the U.S. market, and they just refuse to do it. And again, I'm sure there's a bunch of politics that goes into it. Yeah, yeah. And I know, like the MR five five six and the MR seven six two, they can't import the same ones that they sell 
mm-hmm. military, so yeah. they have to change different things on it. Yeah. So. Anybody who makes clones of 416s from R556s, you pretty much change out like every part of the yeah. gun. You, and in the parts that you get, they don't sell just straight up to you. So you either got to fucking find some squirrel to import it in for you, or you got to pay exuberant prices. Like trying to clone like a 416D is so much money on top of the fact that the base gun you're doing it <laughs> yeah. with is so much money. And then throwing out half the parts. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. If they, if they actually just released like a 416D clone here made in the US, that would be a big seller. I'm excited. Or at least do like what Zastava does is they make like the base rifle in their home country, ship it to the United States, and then at their factory, they configure it, you know, correctly. Like, I don't know about that. What do you mean? I don't, I don't think they do that. I think somehow they get it. They get it. I can't imagine there's, where were they at? Arkansas? Well, I mean, even Global Ordnance does that. The Strybox they are sold here are not how they come from Slovakia. Yeah, but I don't, I mean, do you really think Americans are putting those together? Yeah. That's a lot of, they, they make, no, a, they bring in a lot of AKs. Not necessarily putting them together, but, you know, adapting them to the U.S. market. I know they're adapted, but I think that, I think they're, I don't know. It, it I don't know. I, There's I, a debate I, to be had there. I, I, I refuse to believe an American put together a Zastava. No, I mean, they put together the, like, all the hard parts. So they do the, the pressing and the rivets. They press the barrel. The only thing they do is they, I think they open up the, they have to, because they can't import double stack right. assault, assault rifles. Yeah. Quote, unquote. Um, and they open up the um, magwell, and then they put on the furniture. And now it's a, uh, you know. I like Zastava. Me too. A great AKs. Yeah. They're not very compatible with AKM stuff, though. No. They're, they're kind of proprietary in a lot of ways. The, it, you'd be surprised now. Like, everyone's making stuff for Zastava now. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, almost every AK part you see, besides the Zeneco stuff, obviously, like, you can, on the website, it's like. ZPAP. AKM or ZPAP, which is <laughs> sick. We bought tickets to SHOT Show yesterday. For eight people, it was fourteen thousand dollars. That's what I was doing while the power guy was here. I was buying, I was buying tickets for everybody. Like tickets and hotel. T- yeah, so it was fourteen thousand dollars to take eight of us and and for lodging, and and Luke is rooming with Frank. We're gonna have a saw great time. That. You saw that? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Frank and the CPAP. <laughs> Yeah, do you have me the paper? I was reading like the uh, matchups, and I was like, "Ah, oh, Luke, <laughs> Luke, are you excited to go?" Uh, oh yeah, I've wanted to go to the shot show since I was like twelve. So really, yeah, because I used to watch like airsoft videos when I was a kid, and they have like a they'd yeah, go the to they'd go to shot show, and I'd be like, "Oh, that's cool." And then I got into real guns, and I'm like, "Damn, I really want to go." But yeah, I'm excited. I said I had an Eve like Matt. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, I'm I'm super excited. I've always wanted to go, and uh, yeah. Are you disappointed you're not going anywhere? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Oh man, that makes me sad. It's okay. I'm sure I'll get another chance. Well, I mean, disappointed, really? I really wanted to go. Oh. I, the, the, the the time I did go to shot show is probably the best week of my life. Well, there's still time. <laughs> there's still time. I'm hopefully not dying yet. Well, I mean, cause Sandy wants to go too. And like Sandy wants to like, and Sandy makes sense. We do need more people. Like we need like the booth is is way too big this year um, for us to manage it. But like if you went, like you couldn't like walk around and be Omar. Right. You'd have to actually work. Yeah. And talk to people. Just keep me in mind if you need someone. Okay. Or you could get Q to fly you out there. Would you be okay with that though? <laughs> no. <laughs> like, no fucking no, way. No fucking way. <laughs> So you know, I'd be a great rep for them, though. <laughs> so Q is um, Q's coming here uh, next week, and we're going to be doing a podcast with them, nice. um, with what with the guys from Q. Um, I think we're also going to be shooting a boombox, or because Q sent us this fucking care package today, and there's like boxes of six eight ammo. It's and- nice. 8.6 six, 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 and fucking there's boxes of 8.6 ammo and there's like stickers and fucking air fresheners and flags and shit in preparation of the but Gorilla. I, I think they're they I think they're gonna bring it down and let us shoot it. That would be fucking amazing. So we'll have to go film videos at Kevin's. We 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 gotta buy some 
nice, fun targets to shoot at if we're going to film anything, though. We'll hook them up on Amazon. See, eight, if, eight, see if we can get bucks. the see if we can get the, uh, <laughs> the the gel dummies. Yeah, gel dummies would be cool. Like they're like a hundred bucks a piece, though. It depends on which ones you get. Yeah, like we'll go get them from Amazon tomorrow. Okay, done. Like get them from Amazon, and then we'll 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 make really cool videos with freelance Eric. I love watching ballistic gel tests on eight six because you the ridiculous twist rate because it's like a one in three, so it's spinning insanely fast. So when you look at the the wound channel and clear ballistics gel, you see it winding. You see it like doing the just you know, destruction, huh? Yeah, it's insane. It's so cool. We'll have to get one. All right, so I think we're gonna call um, call time. We've been at it for about an hour twenty. Um, thanks if you've sat and watched this. I really wanted to to do a podcast and and go over um, the hurricane and and how it's affected our area and and while it's fresh, you know, and kind of maybe use this as an opportunity to get past the hurricane and move on. This is like a a, a cleansing, a purging. Yeah. A purging of the fucking hurricane PTSD so we can just move on and get on with our lives, you know what I mean? And look forward to the Lions losing. <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> Aiden Hutchinson <laughs> out for the season. It's we don't Yeah. All right. Yeah, and you, and you, and you guys haven't you have you haven't signed Riddick either. It's it's coming, dude. Yeah, it's coming. They also yeah. talked about uh JJ Watt coming out of retirement. Yeah. <laughs> that, there's a lot of theories, dude. You know how to talk flat earth. We can talk. All right, well they they, they did lose once and who'd they lose to? Tampa Bay Don't Buccaneers. <laughs> but um if you get the chance, please smash the like button, smash the subscribe button, check us out on our other social media platforms. Remember we do this so we can increase our imprint on social media. Um, we do this so we can get more customers inside of our store. Um, today, social media is, we are shadow banned. It's proven. There's people admitting to it in videos all over the place, and um, we need all the help we can get. So follow us here. Go check us out on TikTok, Twitter, X, Instagram, Facebook, on SCT Customs and Lasers or whatever. And I thank you for watching our podcast. We will see you again. See you. Peace.